Hi everyone. Welcome to my Shoreline studio. I'm Sybil Musjig. Today we're doing uh, things a bit differently. I'm on my own here and I'm going to be doing some masks. Now, of course, with gel plate printing, which is what I usually do, uh, the mask is an object that you put on the gel plate and you roll paint over it, etc. But today we're going to be talking about uh, masks of a different nature. And uh, I have a book with me. Um, it's called Tribal Arts by Berenice Jeffrey Schneider. And it's a wonderful book. Um, it's mostly about um, African and um, Asian um, masks, not so much about North America, which I'll get into at some other time. But you have these wonderful masks like this. Um, unfortunately, a lot of them are now objects of art sitting in dusty museums and, uh, and they're not used, you know, in terms of religious ceremony or the things that uh, masks were often used for. They were the spirit of whatever they were depicting, uh, whether it was an ancestor, an animal, um, a hero or heroine. It was all about storytelling and ritual and uh, wonderful color and these marvelous objects that, uh, you know, even today are being used, uh, you know, to express themselves. So we are going to go on to the plate and I've made a mask of uh, using some of the reference in this book and then going my own way and uh, we will continue on then. <laughs> so here we have my little um, hand cut uh, stencil. This is the positive. I don't know if you can see that or not. I've left some of the dark marks just otherwise it's totally invisible and I find it's troublesome to try and find it too. This is the negative. So we just uh, if I just want to say have color only there and then the rest is plain, um, I can use that. But I already have a little bit of, um, what's this color, um, cerulean blue and a bit of white. So first off we're just going to recycle some papers. This is one way of using the gel plates uh, prints. and. Uh, just rolling it out. I'm keeping it fairly light. I'm going to be using uh, this one that I did. It's got a bit of sparkle, um, a little bit of a background. It's actually quite rough. Very mask-like. And of course um, where I've cut the areas out of the stencil and brayering off. So I'm going to place it and in this case we'll print with the blue and then these areas and we'll see what turns out. So I'm just going to place it here Sometimes it resists the paint because it's already on there quite thick. So actually it turned out quite nice. So there you go. And we could continue to work with this. And I can, I'll do a ghost print. because we'll be able to work with that as well. I'm just going to take a print of that. Sometimes a ghost print is really much nicer. That was quite a lot of paint. And we'll work with that some more because it, the blue is quite pale. So we're going to rack up a whole bunch of them here and you will see as we progress. It's quite effective and on the white. So, but we can work with that some more. Now I can take the 
the stencil off and we can print some more. So we're just going to whack a whole whack of them up. So this is one way to get a nice series. And of course not saying that you couldn't work into it after the printing is done with uh, Bosca pens, um, pan pastels, whatever you have to hand. This one I'm going to take a little extra time to print because it might be quite And even the second ghost print it works quite well. And definitely we need some background there. So we'll work with that. So let's try a negative. And uh, we'll just do something on the face. I'm going to continue to work with the blue, but I might change it to a darker color. Let's try some thale on here. And I still have a little bit of paint even on my roller. Let's put the mask on. You just have to be careful. <laughs> it's a little off, but it will do. So right now all we're going to get, I think, is that central part. Let's see how this lovely blue. So now we can take that off. Okay, so back to the mask. And uh, let's see, why don't we just roll paint right over top. We're just going to really mess around today. And we'll change color. We'll end up with something quite greenish. So a nice yellow. And I'm going to write right over top of the mask here. And then see what happens. I have a variety of papers here. Uh, this is cardstock, but the rest of these ones are bond. Some of the ones I did earlier. Just stuff I've got left over. Okay. And that's actually quite nice. And we'll use this as a stamp now. So we're going to get so we just have to kind of line things up. Flip her over. And I think you'll love this because I do. All right. I will, of course, crop the edges, but that's quite dramatic and interesting. So now um, let's go back to some of the other ones here. Oh, let's go back to our first one and see what we can do. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, I'm just going to place it on here. Now I couldn't do this before when I used uh, jelly plates that I'd made for myself because it wouldn't stick to the plate, but this 
I have a plexiglass sheet underneath the gel plate and uh, it does um, hold very nicely so that I can flip it over and use it as a stamp. So in this case, uh, let's go to a deeper, darker color. I'm going to use a burnt sienna. I should talk a little bit about, as I said, I used, I referenced one of the masks and then just uh, did my own drawing. So some of the things um, have to do with my own way of working and my own personality, I suppose. Um, you know, sometimes um, you're not feeling that well or you're a bit sad, so I have, those are tear marks. And, uh, <laughs> And I, I, I not, I night owl, and so there's lots of moons on the top. And I love to laugh, and you know, I love a good joke and so forth. So that's why the happy face. Anyway, um, now we're going to just move this over. So if you do a mask like this for yourself, um, you know, make it personal, something about you or something about something you really care about. I think this could be a lot of fun for somebody. And maybe very therapeutic at the same time where you're working things out. It's amazing what you discover about yourself. So that's quite effective. Now we'll do a ghost print of that. We won't get much, maybe a little bit of the mask, but not much, so. So we have almost an intaglio effect here where you're seeing the line. And by printing it one more time, and on my last paper, it had quite a texture to it. And that's picked up here. So that's kind of interesting. I think you can see it better now, so, okay. So we'll set that aside. We'll do one more ghost print. We'll use up our bot damaged paper. <laughs> it's still good paper, it's, it's acid free. Um, it's quite shiny and smooth, actually. And it's picking up some of the underlying colors. So if we reprint that, which we will, some really fun stuff is going to happen there. Okay, onward and upward. Okay, we need some color on there. Uh, let's go a little wilder. Let's do some quinacridone magenta. Let's apply a little heat. And some cad red light. And do maybe a little bit of a rainbow roll. Talked about rainbow rolls before. And basically, you do half of a plate and what color. And roll that off, most of it. And then you put the other color on. So the other half. And then you sort of wiggle in between to get the two working together so that you get a third color, and that's called a rainbow roll. It's a printmaking term for people who do etching. I did take a course in etching at one point, and it was a lot of fun, but it's very um, time consuming, and I like things to be a little more sp spontaneous. 
and accidental. Accidentals are wonderful. Okay, what are we going to print this on? Um, I'm just going to want a straight print, I think, and then we'll go from there. Just make sure my edges are done. And this is how you get another color. And you can see the rainbow roll is quite effective there. And of course, when we pull this up, we're going to have a nice piece. Let's just show that. All right. So we will place this on this one and see what happens. Lining it up. And it will be off slightly, but that's okay. That's always fun. Remember I said some of these accidentals create wonderful art and are interesting, so something I'm always going for. We were pretty close to registration. A little bit off, not too much. Okay, so that's kind of interesting. We could probably do one more pull on that one. Let's work with this one a little bit. So we need I will put this on here. Try and if you offset it, you get kind of a three-dimensional look. Offset means you just put it off a little bit off where you it's supposed to be. And it will give you an edge to the work. Maybe make it really dark. We'll do a purple. I haven't so far it's holding, it's not moving around too much. I was having trouble seeing uh, the plate um, sitting and having it flat. So my dear hubby made me this, what would you call, sort of like an easel, this gray piece here. And uh, it brings it up a little bit so my head isn't in the way and I can see things much more easily. So are we just going to make it plain or yes, I think so. We need the dark color. So again, I've put the mask on, slightly offset. We're going to add the purple on top. Try and line everything up. I usually use my pinkies for and that should be good enough. Yeah, with the this is um cardstock again, so you do have to push a little harder. The bond is so nice to print on. And look at the drama of that. And you can just see the offset slightly, so it's just enough to be really interesting. So that's a keeper. We'll have to put that somewhere over there. Now we still have the ghost print. And print, and we'll work with that some more. Okay, so coming up I'm going to do a different kind of rainbow roll. And the purple is quite effective, this dark purple with a light background. 
And we could probably put maybe the burnt sienna in the background of this after and see what happens. Okay, so we're ready to roll a bit more here and I'm going to use yellow and blue because it really is very effective. And of course then you would get green. So I'm going to have the lengthwise. This is almost like a no tan but not quite because we're not really taking the cutout pieces and putting it on the other side. But it's like a face within shadow. Now I'm using yellow first because don't forget the image gets flipped because I want the yellow on that side. So we'll do the blue here. I had a little bit of brown on it still, but it's not too bad. And we'll use this one for this side. I think it's fairly clean. This side a little bit more. And it's almost a black in the center there. That's quite interesting. Put our mask in place. Now it's fairly sticky. Let's put the purple on top. And I believe it's the rainbow roll um, that we've got there, um, sort of visible, hopefully. But I'm just going to take a, a bond because I, actually it's the a ghost print. I think that's going to work better. We'll see what happens. So that's quite interesting, and right there, can we, I think you can see that. That's because we had color on the mask still. But what I want is the rainbow roll being shown up um, on the ghost print. Well, that's unexpected, but <laughs> interesting. Um, I guess there was more paint on the than we figured on. Very strange. Mysterious, like masks. Okay, let's run that once more. This is ultramarine blue, by the way. A nice, beautiful, intense blue. And of course, I use the golden open paints. I'm really very spoiled because I've tried other ones and they are just not nearly as nice. Now I wonder if we can, yes, we'll use that. And we'll put the mask back on. get some strange effect here. And it's slightly off center again. And I'm just trying to position it as well as possible. There. See what happens here. <laughs> it really was um, quite a bit. You can see the margin here that it's quite off, but 
if I crop this off here, that will be quite interesting. Could have one more step on it too. That could be just to consolidate that pattern on the face a little bit more. Let's print the ghost print, which is what we were mostly after. I'm hoping for that intaglio effect again, plus the difference in color. All right. Yes, we have the intaglio effect. There you go. And the light and dark, like a face is partly in shadow. Okay. Well, we could go on for any length of time here, but um, I'm going to um, work slightly differently next. So I'm going to clean my tools here and I'll be back in a flash. Okay, I'm squeezing out some black. I'm going to modify it slightly just to be a little bit more interesting. I'm adding a little bit of phthalo green. And uh, we won't worry about a rainbow roll. We're just going to roll it out. I'm keeping it fairly fluid. And uh, putting the mask back on. And one of the ones we worked with before. My paper's curled a little bit, so it's behaving badly. <laughs> it was sticking better before when I had paint on it. And I've got a bit of water here for some reason, probably from the roller. And we'll offset it slightly and then hope for the best in the printing stage. It won't matter if I'm right on this time because I'm not lining up the mask. It's already in place. And we'll see how that turns out. Black can be very dramatic, as you can see. Uh, rolling a bit, and I'm going to just put it so the camera can see it. So that is definitely drama. So there you are. Nice way to finish that one. So I hope you enjoyed uh, having a look at mask um, making, both in the sense of making your own stencil and then working with it and seeing what uh, develops in your own way. And having your own personal um, symbology makes it very special and uh, you know, have fun with it. And that's the whole point of art making anyway. And as I said before, it's extremely therapeutic. So hope to see you again uh, in another video soon. And uh, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you another time. Bye for now.